Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson. In this lesson, we're actually not doing rates of reaction. We've actually got a bit further than that. We're now doing chemical equilibrium, which you should know because you were probably with me yesterday. Um, and we were learning about how to cope with one of these tables. And I've included the first page in which is just to show you what the rice table is about. Just to remind you, because we're going to be, we've actually been busy with that yesterday, and um, we're going to carry on with the question. So a rice table, and I said to you guys that you guys either used a rice table at school, or you use a sumac, or you can use, I think people call this a Shrek table. Um, I don't care what you use as long as you get it right. And what it is, is the first one tells you about the reaction. Then there's the initial quantity that you get given. The change, the equilibrium, the quantity and the concentration. The sumac starts to start, use made equilibrium and concentration, and the, all of them have the reaction at the top. Um, and the Shrek would be start, change, equilibrium and concentration. So I've used the rice simply because it is part of the curriculum and to help you understand. And we have done the rice one for this, where we had carbon monoxide and hydrogen reacted for methane and water. We were asked to work out the molar composition of the equilibrium mixture. And we worked out that this was the concentrations of the different things. And now we need to work out Kc. So the Kc formula for this is Kc equals always products of the reactants. And remember, you never include pure liquids and pure solids in your Kc because their concentrations are one. So that's just silly. So Kc is going to be the concentration of the methane multiplied by the concentration of the water. And it doesn't matter which order you put those in over the concentration of the carbon monoxide, over the concentration of the, I mean, multiply by the concentration of hydrogen, all to the power of three. Because remember, you take whatever the coefficient is and you take it to the power. Obviously, these have got coefficients of one, so we don't have to worry about them. So now, the concentration of the methane is 0,04, the concentration of the water or the water vapor is 0,04. The concentration of the carbon monoxide is 0,06. And the concentration of the hydrogen happens to be 0,18. And remember, it's to the power of 3. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pop that in a calculator. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So we've got 0 0.04 multiplied by 0 0.04. And yes, you guys are quite, I'm quite happy for you to square that. Times by 0 0.06, I mean divide by, times by 0 0.18 to the power of 3. And then it becomes equals and press the SD button, 4.57. So our KC is 4,57. And there are no units because it is a ratio of the products over the reactants. So there are no units for your KC. So please be careful of that. Okay, so we, I said that we were going to talk about what this value of KC means later. So we'll do that later but think about this this is the concentration of the products over the reactants so if this number is bigger than one what do you think we're getting more of the products or the reactants well obviously it means we're getting more products than reactants okay so that is what we're talking about. If case is greater than one, the equilibrium is going to write to the right because we have more products in the reactants. Think about it again. Kc is always the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. Okay. 
So if your case is bigger than one, it means that the numerator is bigger than the denominator, which means we've got more products in the reactants, which means that we've got a high yield. Our reaction is going to have a high yield. We're going to get lots of product out. If case is smaller than one, it means we've got more reactants than products, okay? Which means the reaction is going to right to the left and then our reaction is going to have a low yield, which we don't want. We want to have a high yield because obviously it means we're getting more products out, which means we can sell the products and make money. The whole point about this, of course, is always making money. Okay, so let's look at another example. It says carbon monoxide gas and oxygen gas are placed in a closed container. They are allowed to react to form carbon dioxide, which is CO2. The band equation for this reaction is two carbon monoxide plus oxygen goes to two carbon dioxide. Okay, and now guys, you guys have got to have your periodic tables next to you because you need the relative atomic masses or the molar masses of these things. So if you don't have your periodic table next to you, go and grab it now. You really should have it. I'm going to give you the molar masses for this example, but when you are doing these sums for yourself, you guys need to have your periodic table with you, okay? You've got to, got to, got to do this. And I've said to you several times, that you always should have your information sheets with you all the time in order to make sure that you can use them effectively when you are studying, which means you can use them effectively during the exams. Okay, so we are told we've got 2CO plus O2 is in dynamic equilibrium with 2CO2. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the gases. And we are going to again use the rice. Okay, so this is R. Then you're going to have the initial, the change, the equilibrium, and the equilibrium concentration. Okay, concentration. Okay. It says initially we were given 63 grams of carbon monoxide and 9.11 grams of oxygen is placed in a two decimeter cube container. So remember what I said to you, I said to you that to get the concentration, you always take the number of moles because all of this is in moles, remember? So we take the number of moles at equilibrium and we divide by the volume. So the safe thing to do because the volume is different is to just divide by two, divide by two and write divide by two over here. So then we know that we're going to have to divide this equilibrium by two to find the concentrations, okay? They tell you at equilibrium, the concentration of carbon dioxide is 0, 0,15. So we know that this is 0, 0,15. Sneaky, hey. It says calculate the KC for this reaction. Okay, so we told that the concentration of the carbon dioxide is 0, 0,15, and we're given the masses of carbon monoxide and oxygen that were placed in a two decimeter cube container. So what are we going to have to do? The first thing we need to do is work out the number of moles of the stuff that we're given. So we know that number of moles is mass over the molar mass. So that's going to be 63 over. The molar mass of carbon is 12 and the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So that should be 28 because 16 and 12 is 28. So then what we need to do is get out our calculator and we go clear it and we go 63 divided by 28 is equal to 2.25. So the number of moles that we were given of carbon monoxide was 2.25. So I'm going to fill that in and I'm going to fill that in in purple. What we were given, I'm telling you, is 2.25. So this should also be 0, 0.15 in purple. Okay. We're also given that we've got 9.11 grams of oxygen, but oxygen, this is a diatomic molecule, so therefore it's going to be divided by 32, because again, number of moles is mass over molar mass, which is 9,11 divided by 32, because oxygen by itself is 16, but we now have to double it. So again, we need our calculator. 
So we're going to go 9.11 divided by 32 equals 0, 0.2846. Da, da, da. We always run off to two decimal places. So it's 0 0.28. So that's 0, 0.28. That's 0, 0.28. Okay. And now we need to work this out because this year was the concentration. But concentration is number of moles over volume. So therefore, we can say that concentration times by volume equals the number of moles. The concentration was 0, 0,15. The volume was 2. So if we multiply by that, do you agree we get 0, 0,3? So this on here is 0, 0,3, which means at equilibrium, we got 0, 0,3. So that's the information we had given to us, okay? We got given that, okay? Now, what else? They told us that initially they placed carbon monoxide and oxygen. They didn't say anything about having carbon dioxide in the initial container. So we can assume that we had zero here. So do you agree that means, as far as we're concerned, that we made 0, 3. In order to have 0 0.3 at the end, Okay, we need to have made 0, 0,3. And now remember this dude here, this square, these rectangles, this bit here, this column, this row, is the bit that we use this ratio for. Okay, that is the column, the change column, or the change row. Okay, so we made 0, 0.3. Do you see that the ratio of carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide is 2 to 2, okay? So that effectively is a ratio of 1 to 1, right? If two carbon monoxides were used, we formed two carbon dioxides. If one carbon dioxide mole of carbon dioxide was formed, we used one mole of carbon dioxide. But we only made 0.3. So since this ratio is 2 to 2, which is effectively 1 to 1, means we used... 0, 0,3. We used up 0, 0,3. Now we need to look at this ratio, this one. And you can either look at the carbon dioxide and oxygen, or you can go back to the original and go back to carbon dioxide and oxygen. And do you agree that for every two moles of carbon dioxide, we needed one mole of oxygen? So we needed half the amount. So that means we only needed to use up 0, 0,15. Okay, so what you need to understand is this is what we have in our cupboard. This is the ratio, okay, of what we have to use. This is what we've got in our cupboard. This is what we've used up, and this is what we've got left over. So what do we have left over? Five. Okay, so do you agree that becomes 0, 0,3, 0? So that becomes 1. So we've got a 5. 12 minus 3 is going to be 9. And that's 1,95. So we still got 1.95 moles of carbon monoxide in our cupboard. Okay, if you want to think of it that way. Yeah, we've used up 0, 0,15. But what have we got left still at equilibrium? We've got 0, 0,13 still at equilibrium. And we've made 0, 0,3. But now we need the KC, and KC uses concentrations. So we need to take that 1,95 and divide it by 2. So 2 goes into 1, it doesn't. 2 goes into 19, 9 times remainder 1. 2 goes into 15, 7 times remainder 1. And that's a 5. So that becomes 0, 0,98. 0, 0,98. Okay, now if we look at, um, now if we look at this one here, 0, 0,13, okay, we need to take this 0, 0,13 and we need to divide it by 2. So 2 goes into 0, it doesn't, 2 goes into 1, it doesn't, but 2 goes into 13, 6, 5 times, again we round it over to 2 decimal places, so it's 0, 0, 0.7. Okay, now you're quite, I'm quite happy for you guys to not round off to two decimal places here and then round off at the end. It makes no difference to me. You're going to get the right answer because they allow for that, okay? So now we've got to do our KC. So our KC is always the products over the reactants. So it is going to be the concentration of the carbon dioxide squared 
all over the concentration of the carbon monoxide squared multiplied by the concentration of the oxygen. So therefore, the concentration of the carbon dioxide is 0.15 squared, so it's 0.15 squared, all over the concentration of the carbon monoxide, which is 0 0.98 all squared, multiplied by the concentration of the oxygen all squared, which is 0 0.07 squared, not squared. Now, great tools, I want to say something to you guys. If you've messed up, or let's say you looked at this question and you've gone a bit blank and you've been a bit of a nervous breakdown in the exams, you can still get marks for this even if you don't do all these bits, okay? And let me show you where you can get your marks, okay? You can get marks by doing the KC. By just doing the KC alone, you're going to get some marks. You know that the concentration of the carbon dioxide at the end is 0.15. So you get marks for that. You also get marks for filling it in there. So you can get four marks out of what is possibly a 10 or 11 mark question just by filling in stuff that you know, okay? So just be, just try these questions, okay? The more practice, the more you try them, the more practice you get in them, the better you're going to get at it and the easier you'll find these, okay? But what I'm trying to say to you is if you get into the exams and there's a question that just feels a little bit beyond you or you're rushing towards the end of the exam, you've left this question to the last and you're freaking out a bit, at least write out the the KC expression, okay, the mass expression. At least write this out because you will get marks for that, okay? So try and see what you can get marks for even if you're freaking out a little bit about these questions. Okay, so let's see what the KC value is. Let's substitute into our calculator, put it in. So we're going to have 0 0.15, mm -mm, 15 all squared over 0.98 squared multiplied by 0 0.07 equals and that becomes 0, 0,334. We round off to 0, 0,33. So the case value here is 0, 0,33. So what did we learn? We learned that if the KC value is smaller than one, what do we have lots of? We have lots of reactants. So what can we say? We can say that this reaction lies well to the left and therefore we're gonna have a low yield of carbon dioxide. This reaction lies low to the left, right quite quite far to the left. Why? Because we've got a very low KC, which means we've got a big denominator, which means we've got lots of this carbon monoxide and oxygen. Okay. Right, now let's try a, another question, okay? And you'll notice these are all KC questions, but they're all a little bit different and that's why I've included them because they love asking these KC questions and let me just see if I've included one that's got mark allocation in it. I don't know if I have. No, it's over. Okay, we'll worry about that later. But you're looking at about seven to ten marks for a KC question. Okay, so that is why I'm going through it so slowly and making sure you guys can do it. Okay, so what is this? I just want to see this is KC. Yeah, it is. It says initially excess ammonium hydrogen sulfide, which is a solid, okay, is placed in a five decimeter cube container. And you know what, guys, we should be highlighting, okay? So we've got excess ammonium hydrogen sulfide in a five decimeter container at 280 degrees Celsius, okay? The container is sealed and the reaction is allowed to reach equilibrium according to the following balanced reaction, okay? So the equilibrium constant, your KC is 1.2 times 10 to the negative four. And they want to know the minimum mass of this that must be sealed into the container. Okay. So now, this is quite a nice question. And the reason it's a nice question is because this is a solid, those two are gases. Okay, so your KC is only made up of your products. Okay, your KC is only made up of your products. So your KC is made up of the concentration of NH3 multiplied by the concentration of your hydrogen sulfide. Okay, and they're both in a ratio of one to one. 
do you agree? Okay, and they're telling you that the constant this is equal to 1 comma 2 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so do you agree? I could say let the concentration of ammonia be X. Okay, do you agree that because these two are on a ratio of 1 to 1, Okay, effectively, I could say this is x squared. I could say x squared is going to be 1.2 times by 10 um, to the negative 4. Okay, you with me? So, therefore, I can get the concentration of this is got to be, of x, has got to be the square root of this. Okay, do you understand that? So it's the square root of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is find out what the concentration has to be of one of these. Okay, and then what we're going to do is relate it back to this because we're going to find the number of moles. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, we've got the concentration of ammonia and the concentration of hydrogen sulfide is going to give you basically the, okay, let me try again. The concentration of ammonia multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen sulfide in the gas is going to give me my Kc value. Okay, do you agree? So, wait, let's just try again. So you've got Kc, I just want to explain it properly, is equal to the concentration of the ammonia multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen sulfide. But they tell us that that is 1 comma 2 times by 10 to the negative 4. Okay, do you happy with that? We don't have anything except the volume of the gas and they want to know the minimum mass. Okay, but if we can get the concentration of say for example ammonia, let's say we get that one. Do you agree the concentration is number of moles over volume? Okay, so if I've got the concentration and the volume, I can get the number of moles. And since the number of moles of the rest is a ratio of 1 to 1, I'll then have the number of moles of this. A number of moles is mass over molar mass. And since I'll have the number of moles of this, and I have the molar mass, it's very easy, we use a periodic table for that, we can get the mass. Okay, do you understand? So, we've now looking at this, okay? So, we're looking at the concentration of these two. And because they're on a ratio of 1 to 1, we can say this is x squared is equal to 1 comma 2 times by 10 to the negative 4. Okay, with me. So, therefore, we can say x is the square root of 1.2 times by 10 to the negative 4. So, therefore, we can say that if I get my calculator out, we can say that, oh, let me just clear, let me get square root, 1.2 exponent negative 4 equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That equals 0, 0, 0, 1. So that there is the concentration of both ammonia or the hydrogen sulfide is the same thing. Okay, they're going to have the same concentrations. So now we know the concentration is 0,11, but we know the volume of this is 5 decimeter cubed. So we can work out the number of moles that we used of either the ammonia or the hydrogen sulfide. So we can say that we've got 0, 0, 0,11 is equal to the number of moles times by, divided by the volume of 5. So therefore, the number of moles is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0,11 multiplied by 5. So the number of moles is 0, 0, 0, 0,055. So the number of moles of ammonia used is 0, 0, 0,055, which means the number of moles of ammonium hydrogen sulfide used is also 0, 0, 0,055, right? So therefore, we can say that, well, in that case, we have got 0, 0, 055 moles of NH4HS, okay? 
So we know that this is 0, 0, 5, 5 equals the mass, which is what we're trying to find out, over the molar mass. So the molar mass of this thing is what? Well, nitrogen is 14, hydrogen is 1, and sulfur is 32. So what do we have? We've got 14 plus hydrogen is 1, so it's 4 plus 1 is 5, plus sulfur, which is 32. So we end up with 2 and 5 is 7, plus 4 is 11, carry 1. 3 and 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So it's over 51 grams per mole. Okay, so if we take that, we get a multiplied cross, we get 0, 0, 5, 5 multiplied by 51 is equal to the mass. So now we need our calculators again. So we're going to go 0 0.055 multiplied by 51 equals 2.81. So the mass is 2,81 grams. Okay, and they're saying, why is this? They say, calculate the minimum mass of this that must be sealed in the container because that is the mass that has reacted. You could obviously have made, it says there's excess, initially excess is placed. So the minimum that has to be put in this container to reach this equilibrium is 2.81 grams. Sure, that was quite a nice question, don't you agree? Right, now let's look at this one. Okay, and I especially chose this one because they've got X. And my students, I usually find that my students really struggle when you have an X in your KC calculations. So let's read it. It says, study the reversible reaction represented by the balance equation. You got hydrogen plus carbon dioxide forms water plus carbon monoxide. It says initially X moles of hydrogen is mixed with 0.3 moles of carbon dioxide in a sealed 10 decimeter cube container. When equilibrium reached, the concentration of carbon monoxide is 0.02. And it tells you that the equilibrium concentration is, I mean, the equilibrium constant, equilibrium constant is 4. Calculate X. Okay, so this is a really nice question because we've got an interest in volume, we've got a concentration, and we have an X. I mean, I couldn't put more in if they wanted to. Okay, so let's go through it. We've got H2 plus CO2, and they're all gases, so they're all going to be included in your KC, okay, is in dynamic equilibrium with H2O plus CO, okay, so again, we're going to do the rice thing, so this is, and guys, if you do rice, please use a ruler, please use a ruler to draw your pretty table, Okay, and this is the concentration, and we've got line, and line, and line, and I tend to put a double line here just to help me understand what I'm doing. Okay, we know that the volume of the container is 10, so I'm going to divide this by 10, divide this by 10, divide this by 10, divide this by 10. Okay, what else have they told us? They've told us the concentration of CO, the concentration was 0 0.02, so that equaled 0 0,02. They said initially X moles of hydrogen were placed in here, okay? Is mixed with 0 0.3 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay. Excellent. Now, <laughs> I didn't mean to make a pun, but it worked. Okay, so now, do you agree that they don't mention anything about having any water vapor or carbon monoxide? So we can start this as zero and zero, okay? which means that we must have made this stuff. So we need to take our 0.02 and times it by 10 to get me 0, 0,2. Do you agree? 0 0.2 divided by 10 is 0, 0,02, which means at equilibrium, I had, oh, what the heck did I just write? At equilibrium, I had 0, 0,2 moles of carbon monoxide. Okay, which means we must have made 0, 0,2 moles. Now remember grade 12, this dude here, this dude, he is the one that we use for the ratios. And in this case, the ratios are 1, 1, 1, and 1. So it makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go back to the pen. 
So now that is what we got given and that's what we worked out, okay, that we made 0, 0, 2. If the ratio of this is 1 to 1, do you agree that we've also made 0, 2 here, which means we ended up with 0, 2 here. Okay, let's worry about that later. If it's a ratio of 1 to 1, it means we've used 0, 2 here, which means we've got 0, 1 left here. And this one, we've used 0, 2 as well, which means that we are left with x minus 0, 2. Okay, x minus 0, 2. Okay, so now we're going to do the final line, which is the concentration. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide. So 0 0.2 divided by 10 is 0, 0, 2. 0, 1 divided by 10 is 0, 0, 1. And x minus 0, 2 divided by 10 is just x minus 0, 2 divided by 10. Awesome. Now we need to write out a KC. So let's do that. So we got KC equals, and they're all gases, so it's going to be all ones. So it's going to be H2O, CO, all over H2 and CO2. Right. So now we know that the KC is 4, right? We also know all these numbers, so we're going to fill them in. So that becomes 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 2 over, and here's the tricky bit, x minus 0, 2 over 10, and this is 0, 0, 1. Okay, so do you realize that I can cross multiply? I can take this to the top, and then this goes to the bottom, okay? So I end up with x minus 0, 2 over 10, is equal to 0, 0, 2 squared, I'm just lazy, the time side is squared, over 4 times 0, 0, 1. Okay, so let's work this out on our calculator first, just to get rid of some stuff. So let's do that. So we're going to go, okay, fine, we've got a fraction, we've got 0, 0, 0, 0.02 all squared, all over, 4 times 0 0.01 and that equals 1 over 100 which is 0, 0.01. Oh, makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to write up here now, okay? So we've got x minus 0, 0, 0.2 over 10 is equal to, and now I've gone blank, it's 0, 0, 0.01, 0, 0, 0, 0.01. So what do we need to do? We're now going to multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the denominator. So we get x equals, no, sorry, you're going to x minus 0, 0,2 is going to be 0, 0.1. When we take this across, when we're solving for x and we take this across, it becomes a plus. So x is going to be 0, 0,3. Ta-da! So what is the initial number of moles of x? 0, 0,3. Sure, that was actually a really nice question because it had the fact that there was a concentration. I want to just put this in a different color. It had that there was a concentration given to you. It had the fact that there was a nice X. It had the fact that there was interesting volumes. So this was a very nice question. In other words, it's a nice high-end level 4 question and it's something that I would strive to put in my exams or something similar. And it's a very nice question. Okay, now let's talk about Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so all we've done so far is we've talked about KC. We've spoken about if you've got a big KC or little KC. Now we're going to talk about what happens to change the chemical equilibrium. Now there are three factors that can change the chemical equilibrium. The concentration, the temperature, and the pressure. Please do not get confused between rates of reaction. Rates of reaction have got all of these. They've got concentration, temperature, and pressure, but they also have surface area, nature of the reactants, and a catalyst. Okay? Remember that, okay? Rates of reaction have got catalyst, nature of the reactants, surface area, concentration, temperature, and pressure. Le Chatelier's principle, where we talk about the factors that affect the chemical equilibria, only have concentration, temperature, and pressure. And we're going to talk about how they change at the shift equilibrium in a minute.
But first, let's talk about Lashati's principle. And yes, I am terribly sorry, grade 12. You have to learn this definition. It's a horrible definition to learn, but you have to. It says, when an external stress, in other words, a change in the pressure, temperature, or concentration, is applied to a system that's in chemical equilibrium, the equilibrium will change in such a way as to reduce the effect of the stress. Okay, in other words, if we mess with it, if we change its pressure, it's going to rebalance itself to fix that change. If we change the temperature, it's going to do something to try and counteract that change every time. Okay, so. If you change the concentration of reactant, then the position of the equilibrium will shift to counteract the change. That's all that it'll be saying. Okay, if you change the temperature, it will shift it. If we change the pressure, it will shift. That's all it's saying. So if we've got this theoretical equilibrium, A plus B goes to C plus D, and it's a reversible reaction. It has to have a reversible reaction, right? We're saying that just a second. If we increase the concentration of a reactant, so if we increase, for example, the concentration of A, the equilibrium will shift in direction of the reaction to use the reactants. So what's happening to happen is going to try and use those reactants up and we're going to end up with a forward reaction being favored. Okay, with the forward reaction being favored. The forward reaction is also favored if the concentration of the product is decreased. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's just talk a little bit more about this, okay? Let's say we've got the concentration is A plus B of this is now normal, okay? Now I increase the concentration of A. I add some A in, okay? So by the Shatter's principle now, what is going to happen? The forward reaction is going to be favored, okay? So what happens? Do you agree we end up with more C and more D because A and B form C and D. But what happens to poor old B? Do you agree that B is going to decrease in the new, when the new equilibrium is established? It's going to decrease for the simple reason that there wasn't any extra B, okay? So we've added A, Okay, so what's going to happen? We end up with more C and more D, but we've used up some of that B. Okay, similarly, okay, we've said that the forward reaction is also favored if the concentration of the product is decreased. Let's say we've got a, a, a this is, these are all gases, and I managed to suck out some of the D. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm removing some of what ever element D is, okay? So I decrease this, okay? I decrease this. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that you're going to favor the forward reaction. So A is going to decrease, B is going to decrease, and C is going to increase because obviously you're making not only D, you're making C as well. So when you use up A and B, we end up with more C. Okay, you need to understand that. Okay, if the concentration of reactant is decreased, equilibrium, uh, okay, right, never mind. If we now decrease the concentration of the equilibrium of the reactants, let's say I pull some of this out, what's going to happen? I now need to fix this. So now I need to favor the reverse reaction, and what's going to happen is that this is going to decrease, this is going to decrease, but by using up C and D to make A and B, I end up with more B, and obviously I'm trying to fix this huge decrease here. So the reverse reaction is favored. So whatever happens, if we remove or add something, this reaction is going to be pushed into the direction to fix that, to try and overcome whatever's happened. Okay. Obviously, then, the reverse reaction is also favored if the concentration of the products increase. Let's say I increase the D over there, the concentration of D. Then do you agree that we're going to end up with a reverse reaction being favored? Because I'm trying to get rid of that, okay? If I get rid of that, I end up with more A, more B. But plus C is now being used up. It never got increased, okay? So it's getting used up to make more of A and B. Okay, right, now let's look at the effect of the temperature and the equilibrium. 
And you need to understand that the temperature is interesting because when, if the temperature is increased, it's always, it'll increase the rate of the reaction of both forward and reverse reactions, okay, obviously. But it'll always favor the endothermic reaction. The endothermic reaction is always going to be favored more than the exothermic reaction, okay? Similarly, if the temperature is decreased, exothermic reaction is favored. And it is for this reason, together with the fact that the rate of the reactions are increased, that the only thing that affects Kc is the temperature. And we'll talk more about that later. But the effect of temperature on equilibrium is that it always favors, if it's, if it's an endothermic reaction, increasing the temperature will favor it. If it's an exothermic reaction, decreasing the temperature will favor it. So for example, if we've got ammonia, nitrogen plus hydrogen gives you ammonia and delta H is negative, what does that mean? If delta H is negative, it means it's an exothermic reaction. So if it's exothermic, if I heat this up, it's going to favor the reverse reaction. So if I add heat, if I add heat, it favors the reverse reaction, which means we'll end up with more nitrogen, more hydrogen, and less ammonia. But if I cool this down, if I put some ice blocks on it, okay, if I put some ice blocks on it, I cool it down, what's going to happen? We're going to favor the forward reaction, and that means we'll have less of this, less of this, and more of this. Okay, and please note the re relationship. It's one to three. So if we've got one mole less of this, we're going to have three moles less of this, and we're going to have two moles more of this. Those ratios are how the ratio at which the moles either made or used up. Okay, so you have to be careful of that as well. Right, so now let's talk about the effect of pressure on equilibrium. If the pressure is increased, the equilibrium will always shift to favor a decrease in pressure and vice versa. Okay, but now what do we know about pressure? Pressure is considered to be the number of moles over the unit volume, okay? So in other words, if your pressure is increased, we're going to go to the side with fewer moles. So if we increase our pressure, we're going to go to the side with the fewer moles, with the fewer moles. If we decrease the pressure, we're going to go to the side with more moles because we've got more space. So if we look at this example here, an increase in pressure will do what? If we have an increase in pressure, we need to, when you're doing, doing pressure and you've just got gases, you always count the number of moles, okay, of your gases. On this side, we've got four moles, and on this side, we've got two moles. So do you agree an increase in pressure needs to favor the side with a fewer moles? So therefore, the forward reaction the forward reaction will be favored. And grade 12, so we are going to carry on with this tomorrow. I just realized what the time is. So we'll carry on with this tomorrow. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Cheers.